Good day everyone. So someone asked me to react to 1010's latest video on why usage rates is a worthless min metric in Genshin Impact. And I fully agree, these usage rates are absolutely horrible. Uh, all the reasons that 1010 went through uh, sort of um, in this video about like how the numerator and denominator and fractions work, the API requests are out of date, all of those things pretty valid and so on, but I want to dig a bit deeper. So if you haven't watched this video, go watch it, give it a like because I think it's quite an important video. And what we're going to sort of do now is actually dig a bit deeper. So this is how it goes. In Genshin Impact, let me just take a little brush right here. Uh, you've got the entire population of Genshin Impact. So this is all the people in Genshin Impact that actually play Genshin Impact all the way from AR1 up until AR60. The amount of people in Genshin Impact that play the Spiral Abyss, well, they're all here. I'm just going to call them SA. So out of an entire population that actually plays the Spiral Abyss, this is where we are. And what I mean by play is the sort of hardcore meta 36 stars every sort of um, like a best cycle. That's the sort of players I'm looking at right here. The problem now, of course, is if you've got a character like Kokomi, then a very small portion of the community has Kokomi. But those people that do have her, well, or this portion right here, this you can sort of assign a value of 83%, as you can see here by the latest stats. And effectively, it just means that this tiny portion is using Kokomi uh, that have Kokomi are effectively using her. So what does this mean? Well, effectively, it means I can't make any conclusions as to what the meta is in the Spiral Abyss for 36 starring. And I can't even use that to make any inference on like the general like wider audience and so on. And this is why I've been very careful on my channel to sort of talk about usage rates and all of these things, because I know what the truth is. The truth is the 83% of these people that are using Kokomi right here, a lot of them are going to use her with Frilling Tales of Dragon Slayer, Tenacity. In other words, they're just using Kokomi as a jellyfish bot. Uh, for me, if Kokomi had like a 10% usage and the people that are actually playing her um, use her to her full like extent, like the entirety of her role compression, for instance, like Kokomi Banner Comps, Kokomi Taser Comps, Sukokomon, that would make me as a Kokomi main very happy. What would make me really, really sad is if 90% of everyone in this power burst use Kokomi, but the majority of people just use her as a jellyfish bot. That would be extremely sad. I would not want that. I'd much rather have my character not be played than being played in a way that's just like not even bringing out the best of the character. And that's why I'm a Kokomi main. But let's just dig a bit further into this. This is where I also take like cont uh, like a bit of issue with a lot of people that recommend on pulling and everyone's always like, yeah, but remember if you like the character you can pull for the meta is not everything. It's like the reason people are making the video is because of this part. Everyone is focused on this part and it's like uh, if you don't really in the long term pull for this part, then uh, you know, you're not doing yourself a, a service. And this is where I will sort of want to give a bit of a different perspective on Kokomi. Um, instead of focusing on this percentage, I've always been focusing on the channel about the broad utilities of Kokomi. Uh, so for instance, if you are in the broad general player base, why would you want to pick Kokomi? Well, for starters, 99% of the map in Genshin Impact and of your journey in Genshin Impact revolves walking in the overworld. It revolves around exploration. And that's what Kokomi is so like really useful in because you don't need to hop onto a statue of seven. You don't need your burst to heal. All you can do is you can literally explore at your leisure, at your own pace, at your own skill level, whether you're on your mobile phone or whatever, and you can just have a good time. You don't have Ayako or Mona, no problem. Just quickly run across the river if you want to. You'll get your elemental burst back again, but you don't need to even worry. You can just press E and then heal about. So this is the thing that that I think a lot of people miss. There's, there's an entire section of the Genshin Impact game, especially for people that are new or beginners, that we don't really talk about. It is absolutely, in my opinion, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree, it's absolutely fine to pull for a character that you're not going to use in the Spiral Abyss. Um, because honestly, if you are someone that's a low AR or you're just taking, you know, Genshin as like a second game, you're playing it at your leisure and you're not even really ready for the Spiral Abyss, there's nothing wrong with having Kokomi. She's easy to build, she's free to play friendly, she 
sort of gives you a lot of value for the majority of the game and if you do decide well you know what i'm just going to run ride a national because that's what all the theory crafters want you can do that in the little one percent of the game that matters and that'll be fine that's totally okay there's no shame in not running coco minus power abyss and liking the character and wanting to main the character there's like there's no contradiction there uh, so that's just sort of my take on usage rates and all these things so i agree usage rates are absolutely worthless because they don't tell they don't give us the insight as to why that character is being played for instance this little fun fact no one plays Ge um, bennett for his damage you play him as a support and for his heals you no one plays bennett because they want to actually go about smacking the enemies doing 100k um, meme videos no one does it um, no one's playing Zhongli for like the damage that he does and that's just just that's just how the characters are they're just being used as snapshot supports you know just to allow other characters to snapshot a ton of buffs and hey you know you've got a cheap and easy source of gameplay um, and that's it and that's what I don't want of Kokomi. I don't want people to just look at the aspect, or uh, strongest aspect, which is the consistent off-field Hydra, and be like, okay, yeah, so that's why we pull for Kokomi. I'd much rather people don't play Kokomi, and when they do decide to play, they use her for all the great reasons. So that is my take. So yes, Tencent, absolutely right um, in everything that he says, and we've got to be wary of rates like these. But then again, just because we can't really get a conclusion from this, we can still make a lot of interesting conclusions about the overworld. So, for instance, Sayu is a character you may just want to build moderately so that she doesn't die in the overworld, but she's absolutely amazing in terms of being able to taxi you around. Same with Mona and Ayaka. You can literally just dash across the entire overworld, especially Ayaka and her eye, um, like Ice Bridge. Absolutely awesome. But yeah, guys, that has been sort of my reaction video. Just a bit of a, bit of a slightly deeper dive into it. And let me know what you think down below.